Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel, Hi Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting equation, a square minus a cube equal to 2. We need to solve this equation for a. So if you have your solution, your answer, you can also pause the video and try to solve this question on your own, and then we will check your answer, so it will be really interesting. So right now let's rewrite this question. So let's subtract 2 from both sides. Let's write this 2 on the left side. So this is our first step. As a result, what do we have? We have a square minus a cube and we have minus 2 from the from the right side so minus 2 minus 2 and equal to equal to 0 what we're going to do next this is our cubic equation so right now let's try to group something first of all these two so from here these two can be written as 1 plus 1 okay so we can write it as 1 plus 1 because we can write here a, a to the second power and a cube so this one and one we can easily express of so this one we can easily express as one square so it changed nothing and this one right here we can easily express as one cube and then we can group squares and cubes so let's do this first of all we have a square minus a cube and we have minus as i said before we're gonna write instead of these two we're gonna write one plus one okay so we have one plus one equal to equal to zero right now let's let's open our parentheses right here so as a result we have a square minus a cube and we have minus one and we have minus one okay minus one and minus and minus one equal to equal to zero okay so i really hope you understand it and as i said before right now instead of this one we're gonna write one square instead of this one we're gonna write one cube so let's do this right now let's do this uh, tricky step so we have a square minus a cube minus one square and minus one cube okay minus one cube equal to equal to zero right now as i said before we have right here squares and cubes so we can easily group our squares of so this square and this square we can easily group with with this a cube and with this with this one cube so i i just underlined it with the with a different line i just want to say this i just want you to say this right now we're going to group a square and one square so we have a square a square minus one square yeah and in second parentheses we have minus a cube plus one cube a cube plus one one cube equal to zero right now let's look closely what do we have in the first parenthesis we have difference of squares and everyone should know this formula this is basic school formula basic school identity this formula looks like that when you have x square minus y square we can easily write it as a minus y or uh, we have x right here yeah so we have x plus y times x minus y minus y so this is a core uh, this is formula according to these um, expressions right now the second formula we have like a little bit harder formula we have a sum of two cubes so this formula looks like that so we have x cube plus y cube equal to as a result what do we have x plus y yeah x plus y and in second parenthesis we have x square minus x y and plus y square plus y square and right now let's apply each of these formulas so this one we're going to apply right here difference of squares this one we're going to apply right here a thumb of two of two cubes as a result what do we have we have in the first parenthesis we have a plus one yeah a minus one a plus one doesn't matter so a plus one and in the second we have a minus one a minus one and we have minus in this parenthesis we're gonna ex uh, we're gonna expand it in terms of like x cube plus y cube so as a result we have x uh, a plus one sorry yeah a plus one and in the second parenthesis we have a square minus a and plus one plus one equal to zero so right now we can easily factor our mm, our a plus one because we have a plus one right here and we have a plus one a plus one right here so we can easily factor it as a common so let's do this so we have a plus one we're gonna factor it and in another parenthesis what do we have we have a minus one from here i'm just wanna i uh, just wanna write it with parentheses like for better understanding and we can't do this common mistake okay so a minus one minus this one we still have this expression on the on the right side so minus a square minus a and plus one equal to equal to zero so right now we can we, we factor it because we have first parenthesis second but this one we can easily uh, simplify this real quick because we, we leave this one as like that so we have a plus one but in other parentheses we can uh, simplify it so this one we can write without parentheses a minus one and minus this one we need to change all this sign to the opposite one okay so we have minus a square plus a and minus uh, minus one 
Okay, so right now let's find the common thing right here. Right here. So we have we have a right here. So we have two a minus one minus one. So we have minus minus two. Okay, so let's do this right now. So we have a plus one, a plus one right here. In the second parenthesis, we're gonna start with this minus a square. Okay, in the next steps we're gonna multiply it by minus one. But but I just want to solve this question step by step. So we have minus a square. So let's write it like that. So minus a square. The next thing, what do we have? We have plus two a. Yeah, plus 2a, plus 2a right here, and we have right here minus 1, minus 1, so we have uh, minus 2. Minus 2 is equal to 0. Right now, this is up to you. You can easily leave it like that. You can easily write uh, that this parentheses is equal to 0 or this one, but I recommend you, like, for, for, for better and for, um, for better expression, you need to multiply it by minus 1, okay? When you multiply it by minus 1, we're going to multiply this minus 1 by this expression. So we're going to change all these signs. So it changed nothing, so don't be scared about it. So this one will leave like that, so a plus 1 without any changes. But this one, we're going to multiply it by minus 1, okay? So we have a square minus 2a minus 2a and plus 2 is equal to 0, of course, because we multiplied by minus 1 all the sides, uh, so uh, we still have the zero on the on the right side. Right now, the classic, uh, the classic math uh, thing, because we have mm, a product of two parentheses, and a product of two parentheses is equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero. So we have a plus one equal to zero, or the second parenthesis is equal to zero. A square minus two a, and plus two is equal to is equal to zero. Right now, a plus one equal to zero. We can easily find a a first real quick equal to minus one. So a first equal to minus one, and right here we have a quadratic equation. So without any doubts, without any problems, we can easily find it with the basic method of coefficients. Of course, this is up to you. How do you prefer to solve this question? So this is my approach. So the basic one, yeah, a equal to one and b equal to minus two, yeah, minus two and c equal to and c equal to two. Let's find real quick of a discriminant because of this method uh, we really need to find discriminant. So b square minus four a c. So as a result, we have minus two square minus 4 times 1 times 2. So discriminant is negative. Yeah, we have 4 minus 4 times 2 equal to 8. So our discriminant is equal to minus 4. So it means that in this branch, in this branch of quadratic equation, we're going to have like uh, two complex roots. But let's find it. Let's find we're going to have like a second and a third. So let's do this. So from here, we're going to have a second and a third equal to, we have a classic formula. Everyone knows about it. So we have uh, minus b plus minus square root of d all over to a. Let's do this. Let's let's uh, plug in each of these elements into this spot. We know everything. So we have minus b minus minus 2, yeah, minus minus 2, plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 4, and we're going to divide it by 2 times 1, 2 times 1. Let's simplify this real quick. So we have 2 right here, so 2 plus minus. This square root of minus 4, we can easily, mm, this minus 4, we can write it as a product. So minus 1, times 4. We can easily write it like that as a product and all over 2. But this is our basic uh, square root property. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this property. So when we have square root of ax times y, for example, or maybe square root of x times y times z, doesn't matter how many elements do you have right here, but basically we can easily split it like square root of x times square root of y. And let's apply this mm, rule right here. As a result, we have 2 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of square root of 4 all over all over 2. This square root of minus 1, this is our complex unit. This is our i. So we have 2 plus minus uh, 2i over to over 2. And the final step, we're going to divide uh, our numerator by 2. So as a result, we can write it like that. So 2 over 2 plus minus 2i over 2. Okay, we can easily split like real part and imaginary part. And from here, we're going to have 1 plus minus 1 plus minus i. This is our, so we can easily cancel each of these, each of these expressions. So we have 1 plus minus 1 plus minus i. So these are a second and a third. So I just want to uh, write it like that as a final answer because I don't have enough space right here. So this is our answer right here. So our answer. And on the bottom of it, I'm going to write a second equal to, let's go with the plus sign. So 1 plus i, 1 plus i. 
and a third equal to 1 minus i. So I'm going to group it. This is our real number root and these two roots are mm, complex root. These two roots are a uh, complex root and the final step, of course, right now we can see this graph, you can see these points of intersection, like from geometric perspective, yeah, you can easily see it. And I have a, a small space right here, so I just want to prove, I just want to check uh, uh, a first equal to minus one. So a first equal to minus one, let's do this. So as a result, our equation looks like that. So a square minus a cube equal to two. And from here, what do we have? What are we going to have? We're going to have minus one square minus minus one cube equal to two. Okay, minus one square, these are even power, so we can actually get rid of these parentheses and minus sign. So we have only one. Uh, this is our odd power, so it means that we still have minus, or still have a negative sign, because like even powers, we, we get rid of this negative sign, even po odd power, we're going to have this negative sign, but with this negative, we're going to have plus, so plus one equal to equal to two. So our roots, our root is, is really great. And if you want to prove it, if you want to check it, like from the, uh, from the, uh, from our um, theoretical algebra, we have right here a third. So it means that according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, we're going to have like three roots. And uh, we don't know how many real number roots, how many complex number roots, so for example, one real, two complex, as exactly our case here, but we're going to have like two real, one complex, or maybe three complex. So according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, we can easily say, okay, we, we, we solve this question absolutely correctly because right here we have third power and we have three roots. So it means that, uh, for example, you're going to have like four power, it means that you have four roots in total. Basically, you don't know how many real number roots, how many complex roots, but this is the main sign, okay? You have second power, the highest, you're going to have two roots. Exactly our case with quadratic equation, two roots. Third power right here, three roots. One root, one real, two complex, maybe two complex, one real. So, you know, a lot of a lot of combination, a lot of things, but as a proof, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, you can easily be proud of yourself that you solve this question correctly, third power at the highest one, and three, and three root. So this is my approach. Of course, you can write your approach, maybe according to a Cardano formula, the basic one, yeah, the, the classic method, but I just want to, I, I like to do a few manipulations, few things exactly right here. So uh, split this two as a second power, as a third power, then group and then factor, a uh, factor something. This is like a great uh, method if you fill the equation, because sometimes, for example, you have right here, uh, you have right here three, so there's no way you can, you can expand it, you can sp split it like that. So, you know, this app to you, this is all about mm, everything about experience. So this question, we can solve it like that. Another one, maybe with the Cardano formulas, but for me, Cardano formulas is a long one. I don't like this. Cardano formulas, I just wanted to recommend you to, to fill the equation. Maybe sometimes uh, you have equation that requires like a Cardano formula. So this is, this is up to you, but I recommend you to uh, do a few manipulations to solve this question uh, like that, because in 90% of cases, if you have this question on your exam, then this question is solvable by this uh, manipulation method. Okay. And maybe sometimes if you need to solve this, if you need to practice Cardano formulas, you can easily solve this question with the Cardano formulas, but I prefer this one. So thank you for your time. Take care of yourself. Have a great day. Also write your thoughts, write your response about this question in the comments below. It will be really interesting to read about it. And see you in the next videos. Have a great day. Take care of yourself.